This video is going to explain how to export one of your views from your Revit model as a DWG format. The context of this is to use these drawings that you export onto the total station. As you can see here, I have a very basic Revit model that I intend to lay out with the total station. The drafter has prepared several different architectural views of this model for me. Typically, these are called sheets and they're labeled with some sort of nomenclature according to your company. All you need to know is the sheet name that you intend to export. Find that sheet, open it, and then export that view. And let me show you what I mean. Let's say for instance, I know I need to lay out sheet number 8201. All I need to do in Revit is to go over to the guide, basically the table of contents on your left, and I'm simply going to open up this floor plan ground floor sheet. That's what this icon stands for. That's a sheet icon. If I open that up, you'll notice that I can see the drafter's preparation of this sheet in 2D format for all of my drywall in this case. But this would apply to see the 2D view of your HVAC, your mechanical, your electrical, any of that work that you're doing would be seen in this view prepared by the drafter. Now, in order to get this into a nice 2D, simple to use drawing that you can view while you lay it out on your tablet, you simply need to go to File, Export, and choose a CAD format of DWG. Once this is completed, it's going to take you to this option screen of how you want to export your DWG. And there's just a few things to note that will help you make sure you have success in this export. I usually click on this three dot ellipsis and I modify my export by going to my solids and make sure that if I was using a 3D view for whatever reason, that I indicate that I want ACIS solids. It makes it so that it's not poly mesh and it's easier to use and manage. For my units and coordinates, I just check to make sure that these are what I expect them to be. Usually I like to export DWG units and units of inches because I'm in America. And my coordinate base is uh, usually internal origin. But if you're noticing that for whatever reason you're given points from the Revit modelers and they're using shared coordinates, maybe you want to use their coordinate system as well. Typically you don't need to worry about this too much, but if you are having issues with your coordinates of your points that you're using on the total station or how your drawings are aligned, it might be related to how you export it based off the coordinates. So just remember how, what you choose. And in general, typically speaking, I like to make sure that all of the room space and area boundaries are not exported as polylines. It's usually better if they're exported in normal basic line work rather than some sort of glued together polyline. It just works easier on the total station. And then finally, down here for export options, I actually do not export views on sheets and links as external references. I prefer not to have any external references, mainly because the tablet you export to is not a AutoCAD software. It's an AutoCAD engine, but the tablet needs to make sure that all views and objects for this drawing are linked together and bound together because it's not going to be able to find any of your external references. You want to make sure they're all bound together as one file. Now, as far as export to file format, I actually usually bring this down to a 2010 and I notice that it doesn't affect the drawing at all. And the reason I do that is because there might be a chance that you're going to be sending this drawing to somebody that has an older tablet and you want to make sure that this AutoCAD version of the drawing will work. Obviously, you want to bring that down to an older version of AutoCAD. So I just by default consistently bring it down to 2010 format and I haven't noticed a change. If you realize to exporting in a 28 format, 2018 format works fine go ahead and keep doing that. But for me, I'll keep it at 2010. Once you're completing this setup, just press OK. Now finally, now that you have this current view sheet that you're exporting, right, because I have my view right behind me, that's what I'm exporting, I can now press Next and complete the export. The only thing I want to show you before I do that though is you're going to come on to occasion where you're going to be given a list of sheets that you need to export. Sometimes your drafter is going to say, hey, you need to export sheets number A100 to A400. And it's gonna be faster for you to do that if you create a big set of sheets you wanna export right here all at once. And very briefly, I'll show you how to do that. You simply come up to new set, call it whatever you want, and you can then find all of your sheets, right? The sheet icon looks like this. Find your sheets that you need to export. So I'm gonna drag all the way down to where I see the sheets. Let me expand this out. And now I can see the sheets as I need to export them. 
sometimes it's more helpful to go to the view, the the, uh, the, sh the, sh the sheet view that has the legend on it, and that icon is represented by this icon right here, this little sheet icon, and I can just keep scrolling down because those are going to actually have the names. The only thing with this is it's going to export your uh, title block with it and your signatures with it if that's okay with you. But sometimes going down to this icon and just indicating which ones you want to export from there will work as well. And of course, you can export all the views and sheets in that model. But for me, I'm going to go back and just do the current view sheet only, which I have in the background, just so that I'm not going to be waiting here for 20 minutes as I export so many things from this model. So here I have this sheet. I'm going to say next. I'll go ahead and put it into a basic test folder. Now, as far as naming the file, I usually like to use shorter names. So I'll just have an automatic short name and it'll just name it the name of the, the plan right there. So I'll press OK. Make sure that export views on sheets and links as external references is unchecked again and say OK. And now you can see in that folder, here's the plan and I can open that up in AutoCAD and it'll be able to be used on a tablet as well. And here's what it would look like, as you can see here on my screen. Now, for one last thing I wanna show you is if you prefer to use the 3D models and you wanna export a 3D model, you certainly can do that as well. And you have two options. You can do it as a DWG, which is what we just did, but just make it a 3D view of that DWG rather than a 2D view, which is what we showed you. Or what some people do is they export a 3D view as an IFC. I still believe that the DWG version of a 3D export will work better for you on a Total Station tablet than an IFC. But of course, I just want to show you where the export button is for IFC in case you feel like you need to use this. Please note, however, that IFC files can be very large because they contain a lot of 3D elements. Some tablets probably won't support that size of a file if you were to import it into your tablet, which will force you to use a DWG version. However, if you have a simple enough IFC version of your file that you want to use, this is the button pushes to export that version of IFC. Just remember that some Total Station tablets might struggle to identify ends of lines and points on the tablet, and you might need to create all those points beforehand, so that way the IFC model acts more of like a viewer for the drawing in the background and the end user simply has to tap the points they want to lay out. But just in case, and you want to practice with this, you can simply export an IFC model using the same method. I'll go to File, Export, and this time I'll just simply choose IFC. I'll go ahead and put this in that same test folder and press OK. And hopefully that's all you need. Now you can import a DWG or if you have a simple enough IFC, you can import the IFC as well. I will make sure to link in the description below the video on how to create points in Revit using the Hilti Field Points Point Creator. Remember that it's almost better to have a 2D version of the model in the background simply because it's an easier file to manage on a tablet. And then simply make sure that the points you import are already created in 3D space if you're working in 3D. So I'll make sure to post a point creation video from Revit in the description down below. Thanks and please let me know if there's any questions.